Welcome to the Uzima Health and Wellness Podcast. What did the doctor doctor say? say? Oh, and some of your your, uh, information and your video, you said the the rodent brain, you Mm -hmm. can use that to model what's going Mm -hmm. on in the human brain. Can you explain that uh, for an eighth grader? (laughs) Yep, yep. So yeah, and the question that people always ask me is, well, how do you know, so we're using looking at rats and mice, how do you know if they're dealing with substance use challenges, if they're anxious and, Mm -hmm. or if they're depressed? Mm -hmm. That's a valid question. What we can do is look at behaviors in the rodents that are associated with some of those mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the rodents will actually take substances that people will take. And if we give them access, they're really good at titrating how much they want. They can also go through periods of abstinence. They can go through periods of withdrawal. If they're in a certain environment, they'll actually try and get the drug more so. So they'll show some craving type behaviors. So one of the things that we look at in particular is relapse. So thinking about animals that have been using, say, cocaine for a certain period of time, they have a period of time where they don't have access to that. If we put them back in the environment where they were used to taking that drug and Mm -hmm. we give them cues that are associated with that drug taking, they'll start to take again. So that's similar to someone, let's say someone, you know, grew up in a certain environment use drugs a lot in that environment. And this, these are from conversations I've had. They'll leave that environment, maybe go to a rehab center, right. be clean. They'll come back. They're in that same environment. What we see looking at the rodents is there are a lot of processes in the brain and certain chemical messenger signals that get activated when they're in that environment that contribute to the craving and the relapse. Mm-hmm. So we can look at that behavior in the animals, also look at what's happening in the brain and see if there's certain interventions or medications we can use to kind of dampen that response, keep the animals from craving and relapsing. And those same things can be applied to people as well. So it's really a direct correlation. And we can do the same thing with anxiety related behaviors and mm-hmm. depression related behaviors. So we I have to ask ourselves, what is driving the addiction? Mm-hmm. Do you believe or have you found that there is, uh, there are patients who uh, genetically are predispositioned to be addicted? Or do you think that there is some psychiatric um, maladaptive behavior or uh, some diagnoses that drives the need for addiction? So it's a it's a little bit of both. And then on top of that, you, you add in stressors that people experience, whether those are racial stressors or other traumatic experiences. And those also heighten the likelihood that people will use or get into a place of abuse as well. So it depends on what type of challenge you're talking about. Definitely within the alcohol field, there's a lot of evidence showing that there's a genetic component. So some people are much more susceptible to develop alcoholism than others due to genetics. But then that also impinges upon what environment people have have grown up in, whether Mm -hmm. someone else in the house was also struggling. But it also has to do with the environment in terms of the stressors. So whether people are struggling to make ends meet whether there is ongoing racism and trauma, all those things can heighten the likelihood that someone will struggle. So it's really a combination of all the factors. And so I think the challenge for us is knowing how to integrate and think about all those components while also trying to understand each of the individual components as well. So for us within the research laboratory, we're really focused on trying to understand the components that happen in the brain um, and the genetic components that can influence that, but then also some of these experiential things that can influence that as well. Mm -hmm. Hi, Uzima family. If you like what you're seeing and what you're hearing, subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon below to be notified of our recent videos. What the doctor say?